In this video, I'll cover possibility of a meme coin super cycle, and also I'll cover why I started the channel and what are the members of my DGEN portfolio as part of the bull run of 2024 and 2025. It's going to be a little different video, but I think it's going to be interesting for those who follow the channel to see where I come from, what's my thesis, and why. I have those positions in 2024 or 2025. So many people are talking about a super cycle for Bitcoin, but also for altcoins and especially a subgroup of altcoins, meme coins. And this is related to the arrival of the ETFs for Bitcoin and Ethereum in 2024, and also the arrival of obviously institutional investors and bigger, bigger players in the crypto world. So as you know, Bitcoin has four year cycles. And at the end of those four cycles, usually there's an altcoin part near the end of the cycle where people take profits that they make for Bitcoin and transfer them to Ethereum and altcoin and that include meme coins for the last push of the bull cycle and after that there's usually a big correction that has happened in the last two cycles but many people are talking about super cycle right now why because the these etfs have been consistently buying bitcoin every single week sometimes every single day and that demand for bitcoin many people are thinking that it's going to go beyond the end of 2025 mid end of 2025 where people think technically we should have the end of the bull run as we've known if we analyze the previous two four year cycles for Bitcoin. However, during that period, it requires a quite big sell off of Bitcoin. And in 2025, it would imply a big sell off also of ETFs. However, because the base of investment and investors in the ETF sometimes are linked to big institutions, pension funds, countries eventually, states, companies that have started putting Bitcoin in their balance sheet, well, there could be a situation that those big investors, and usually when these big investors select an asset to invest, they do not invest for a year, two years, four years, for example. They invest for the long term, 5, 10, 15, 20 years. So if these big institutions accumulate a lot of Bitcoin during the whole bull run, and there's very limited sell-off of those ETFs in the mid or uh, end of 2025, the correction at the end of the cycle should be lower or even will not happen if the ETFs continue buying weekly Bitcoin. And that will trigger, and that's what many people have as a theory, a super cycle where instead of having a four-year cycle, we could have an eight-year cycle or even a 12 year cycle, which is similar to what happened to gold once the ETF of gold was approved. I believe the uptrend in gold price lasted 10 years approximately following the introduction of the gold ETF. So could that happen to Bitcoin? We will see. But that's the explanation for the super cycle of Bitcoin. And if Bitcoin goes up, for eight years, 12 years, all coins will follow. That includes Ethereum, Solana, BNB, and the big market cap coins, but also meme coin, Shiba Inu, Dogecoin, and the like. So that would bring upwards momentum and buying, constant buying for those meme coins. And that's where the theory of the super cycle comes from. So in this bull run, I decided to select a few meme coins and a few altcoins for my DGEN part of my portfolio. Obviously, I have Bitcoin and Ethereum also in my portfolio. So I'm going to just share with everybody the composition of my portfolio. And because I had to do some research related to these meme coins and altcoins, that's why I started this channel. Cover multiple assets, evaluate the best ones, and then incorporate the ones that I identified as having the most potential for 2024 and 2025. And that I will cover in a few minutes what those members of my portfolio are and the percentage 
of my portfolio that altcoins and meme coins cover as part of my thesis for 2024 and 2025. So I hope you learn a little bit about the super cycle in Bitcoin and potentially the super cycle also in altcoins and meme coins. Let's go to the charts now. Before we dive in in the Dijon part of my portfolio, I'll just cover my main positions, quickly the percentages, and a little bit of background of how I got there. So I'm not going to talk about numbers, but my portfolio is above $10,000, just to give you an idea. It's in that range. So my portfolio, my biggest positions are three positions in my core, let's say, of my portfolio. That's 71%. First position is Solana with 34% of my portfolio. Then Bitcoin just under by 2%. So 34% Solana, 32% Bitcoin, and then 5% Ethereum. Why Ethereum has only 5%? Because I shifted a little bit my thoughts on Ethereum with the ETFs. I was expecting quite a bit of sell-off for Ethereum. And Solana is dominating the same space as Ethereum. And I believe Solana will take a lot of market cap from Ethereum. So that's why I sold off gradually my position in Ethereum and split it between Bitcoin and Solana. So that's why those two positions are my biggest ones. Solana is 34%. I didn't meant to be that big. It's just that the performance of Solana has been stronger than Bitcoin and therefore my position is bigger because of that. Not necessarily because I put a lot more money into Solana. So 71% is my core position with Solana, Bitcoin, and Ethereum. After that, I have two assets that are not meme coins, that are altcoins. And that's 9% of my portfolio. The first one is Jupiter, which is part of the Solana blockchain. I like Jupiter because it's driving a lot of activity on Solana and a lot of fees on Solana. And I believe that this decentralized exchange will be quite used, quite powerful, and become quite big in the future. That's why I allocated 3% of my portfolio to Jupiter. And then the other position that I have is Kronos, ticker CRO. That's the coin of the crypto.com app. That's the main exchange that I use to buy my crypto. And I also have the card, the Visa, debit card of crypto.com. So every time I buy stuff with that card, I get CRO tokens as a cashback. I've been using this over a year, maybe even two years, and I use it quite frequently. Therefore, I had accumulated quite a bit of CRO tokens. Also, I stake most of those coins all the time. Therefore, my position has grown quite a bit. I also bought on the dips of CRO to accumulate these coins for constant passive income. And that part of my portfolio has grown to 6%. So the double of Jupiter. Okay, so 71% core positions, 9% Jupiter and Kronos. Therefore, that's 80% of my portfolio. And then I dedicated 20% of my portfolio to meme coins and very high risk assets. And that's what we're going to cover here. So the first position is going to be Bonk, ticker B-O-N-K, meme coin. The position is 1.25% of my portfolio. As you'll see, I have seven meme coins that I divided to obtain that 20%. Bonk have, has been quite active. Most of these meme coins are very early on. Most of them are either on the Ethereum blockchain or the Solana blockchain. So I selected these assets based on activity, community, and potential high returns of the community or the blockchain. Keep in mind that I like these meme coins simply because most of them, except one that we'll cover later, are strictly meme coin. There's nothing behind the project. It's all related to the community, buyers and sellers, 
and why I selected meme coins overall to get to a 20% part of my portfolio, it's because most of the new investors that come into crypto, the first coins that they buy are meme coins. They are not Ethereum, they are not Solana, they are not Bitcoin, they are not XRP, they are not Cardano, they're meme coin. Why? Because of their low price and that you can accumulate quite a lot of coins with very little amount. People love to have millions of coins and things like that, or billions of coins in some cases. But that's my premise. There's a lot of new people who will join the party of crypto. And we already have an history about two meme coins who perform extremely well in the previous four years or the last cycle. And I selected five others, and I wish that one, maybe two, perform the way the previous two dominating meme coins perform to push and boost my portfolio. That's the whole thesis, pretty much. It's very simple. High risk, okay, but I'm willing to wait until the end of 2020, uh, mid and end of 2025. And if we end up with the super cycle, I may keep these meme coins for even longer. So Bonk has been one of the performant meme coins out there. That's why it's 1.25% of my portfolio. The next meme coin that I have 1.3, a little more than Bonk is Floki. Again, little older asset, but still quite young. It was not present in the previous bull run. Therefore, how it will perform, I don't know. It has a lot of potential, yes. That's why I selected Floki. The next in line is a very popular meme coin, Pepe meme coin, who already performed extremely well. But again, we are in the middle of the bull run and we could have a very nice surprise from Pepe. And Pepe is 1.4, a little more than Floki, 1.4% of my portfolio. Next in line is Whiff, Dog Whiff Hat, which I believe is a Solana meme coin. I selected a few of them. I believe Bonk also is Solana meme coin. So I selected these because of the activity on Solana and the high amount of transactions related to these meme coins. Dog with Hat has not been around for a very long time. Again, it was not here in the previous cycle. So what Whiff will do in this bull run I don't know, but I put a little bit of my assets in there and WIF is 1.5% of my portfolio. Next in line on the meme coins is Dogecoin and Dogecoin is a lot bigger position. So it's 2.4%. There's two reasons why that position is bigger. I have been investing in Dogecoin for a while but I would say 90% of the coins of Dogecoin were obtained with mining. So I co-mine during the fall and the winter and the beginning of spring usually when the temperature here in Canada is cold, I mine Dogecoin and Litecoin at the same time. Most of the coins that I get are Dogecoin. The Litecoin position, I already sold a bunch of Litecoin, I still have a little bit, I always have a little bit, but it's not a big percentage, it's less than 1%, I think it's even less than 0.5% of my portfolio, so I don't count Litecoin, I also don't believe in Litecoin, therefore I don't keep those coins. Dogecoin, I have been accumulating and staking Dogecoin if I can, if not, I just accumulate those coins in my portfolio, so again, this is one of the meme coins that performed extremely well in the previous cycle. Some people never sold Dogecoin at the peak of the cycle. My thesis is that I hope we go higher than the previous all-time high. Will it happen? I don't know. If it does, then I expect to uh, get quite a nice return from Dogecoin. We will see. But again, the same strategy applies. I plan to keep it on up to the middle of 2025. And then based on what Bitcoin does, we'll decide to keep the position or sell a part of the position or the whole position. We will see. It's going to depend on 
what Bitcoin does and how altcoin season also meme coin season will be for these assets. The other original meme coin that performed extremely well in the last bull run is Shiba Inu. That's another asset that I have in my portfolio. In this position, it's a little higher than Doge at 2.8%. Again, the same thesis. We want to see if Shiba Inu will be will perform better than the last cycle, go even higher. And if it does, then we will have quite a big return on our investment. We will see how it goes. Dogecoin and Shiba Inu have, you know, the biggest communities of all those meme coins and have history of previous performance in the previous bull run. Shiba Inu is the only one that has, you know, NFTs and some type of ecosystem that other meme coins do not have is will this contribute to get a bigger price for shiba inu in the cycle i don't know i still treat it as a pure a meme coin like the others just on community buyers and sellers of the coin again we will see the performance and finally the biggest position that i have for meme coins is Milady meme coin ticker LADYS. That position is 8.5%. So just to give you an idea, Milady meme coin is 8.5%. And then the next one in line is Shiba Inu at 2.8%. Why Milady meme coin position is 8.5% is because I invested early in this meme coin and it has already exploded in value in my portfolio and in size. Therefore, I got to 8.5%. Most of that percentage is gains because I got in early, not necessarily because I put the same amount of money equivalent to 8.5%. I didn't do that. Most of the gains and the size of Milady Meme Coins position is related to unrealized gains because I got in early. This is a high risk, high reward type of situation. This meme point, for whatever reason, I started invested in it. I didn't know it would do that well, but it has performed quite well, quite strongly. And I believe, again, it's a young meme coin, NFT related project, and I expect it to perform quite well in its first real bull market and altcoin season. So I hope that this position will grow even higher than 8.5% in this bull run. So these cover all the memes that I have in my portfolio. Milady first, then Shiba Inu, Doge, Dog with Hat, Pepe, Floki, and Bonk. Those are the main positions that are almost 20% of my portfolio. I like to take risks. That's why it's a big percentage of my portfolio. But keep in mind that Solana, Bitcoin and Ethereum make up 71% of my portfolio also. So I have the solidity of Bitcoin and Solana that I truly believe in. And then meme coins 20%, it could go to zero and I would be fine with it because I don't believe Solana, Ethereum, and Bitcoin will go to zero anytime soon. That's why you put your chips in there, take some risks in crypto, and if we get 5x, 10x, I would be happy. If we get way more than that, that will be a bonus. But I have absolutely no way of knowing who will perform well, what's going to happen to the market until june july of 2025 we will see i will monitor this and give you guys updates but that's the main thesis of why i started the youtube channel here because i had to do research on these memes i had to see which blockchain were associated with these meme coins and after that just selects the ones that i thought had the best potential but again it's like picking you know numbers for the loto or placing a bet 
on a casino, it's very, very difficult to select top three, four meme coins that will, will perform well in 2025. I just hope one or two of these seven will give us out of this world returns. If that happens, I'll be extremely happy. If more than two perform really well, then good for me. And if zero perform very well, then I still have my core position that I believe will perform reasonably 2x, 3x, 4x in that range in this bull run. And that will grow my portfolio of crypto assets. So this is the story about how I build my portfolio and especially the degen part, the highly speculative part. I hope you enjoyed this video. Hit the like, subscribe. Tell me how you're building your portfolio, what you think of how I build my portfolio. Is it too risky for you? Not risky enough? Just share your thoughts on my selection and maybe even share your portfolio in your percentages. Please do not share amounts in dollars. Nobody needs to know how big or small your, your portfolio is. Talk in percentages and that will give everybody an idea of how your portfolio is constructed. See you all on the next video.